Welcome to Off-Road Observer. We're going to look at my 2018 JLU Sport. Uh, I call it the Wabash Cannonball. Back when I was a kid, we used to travel from Memphis to East Tennessee, go into the mountains, but we always stop in Nashville where uh, the Opryland amusement park was, and there was a roller coaster ride called the Wabash Cannonball, which is the shirt I'm wearing right now. And uh, the thing would go upside down, and hopefully I'll never go upside down on this thing, but um, Let's look at uh, all the features that comes with the uh, JLU Sport. This is unique, it's different, and I'll give you uh, those differences and uh, tell you why you may want to think about some things before buying a JLU Sport. All right, the. Uh, Let's start at the front of the JLU. Um, it comes with a plastic bumper and, and includes uh, some Euro guards that go from the fender down to the bumper. That I took off immediately. And uh, it was about some eight millimeter bolts. It was a kind of a pain in the neck, but I had to take it off. It was stupid looking. It's supposed to help with MPGs, but I took them off, didn't notice anything. Uh, then I had some trouble finding a bumper I like. I'm still not crazy about m most of the bumpers in the market. I ended up, because I have other things to, to buy, um, I went with the cheapest bumper I could find on Amazon, and I really love how this matches up with the uh, new grill. Uh, a lot of the bumpers available were a lot square and more rectangle like the, J the uh, JK grill. So I really love um, the way the lines are. What I'm probably going to do is uh, have somebody reverse engineer this and actually uh, make one um, with some modifications later on. Added some D-rings to the front and a Rough Country 12,000 pound winch that was on our TJ. But 12,000 pounds is a lot and it's probably more than enough for even a JLU, but uh, for the JLU it's going to work out fine. And uh, luckily we haven't had to use this yet, but uh, it should be good. We had a steel cable, looking to upgrade that to a synthetic line later. We also added some lights. It came with some square lights, but I added these ProComp uh, lights. I, I do a r red, white, and blue uh, thing, so I like the white. And uh, mainly I got them for driving lights because these lights, as I'll get to in a second, just don't cut it. Um, so adding the driving light should help me out um, as I go forward. One of my favorite parts about the JL is this grill. It looks so much better than the previous JK model. The JK model was a square grill or rectangular grill. Um, what they seem like to go back to is that TJ look where it kind of scoops down or, or tapers down. And um, I really just love the look of this grill. Maybe a little CJM where the lights come into the grill a little bit too. I uh, just really love the look at, of it. Um, I also got just like the regular headlights, which um, they're not any good. That's the one thing they still haven't improved on. Um, these are just the regular halogens. I recommend you going to the LEDs. However, it does have the cool Jeep logo in it. And I know a guy that I can swap out the LED bulb in, so that's probably the next uh, mod I'm going to do on this Jeep. All right, one of the upgrades I did, um, or I had in this Jeep when I bought it, was a 2-liter turbo engine. Um, it gives you just slightly less horsepower than the 3.6, but just slightly. I'll have the numbers up for you there. Uh, but it also, this one includes the e-torque, which actually uh, any 2-liters... Um, any two-liter sports after 2020 do, does not include this e-torque system as far as right now in, two, in 2020. Uh, you can get it in the Sahara, but what that does is it adds a lithium battery to the back and it adds e, what we call e-torque, or what they call e-torque. Um, so you get more torque than you do with the 3.6. And I, I've seen it, it really, really works very well. The lithium battery also runs the auto stop start um, to it. Uh, another added feature I have with this particular one that you that I'm not sure if you can get at the same package is the uh, tow package came with this and that includes a uh, heftier uh, alternator and uh, you know so you can run everything off of that uh, much better. 
Um, this also comes with the 8-speed transmission. You don't have the manual option right now with the 2-liter, but the 8-speed transmission is wonderful. It's really the difference between a JK and JL. It is so quick and so fast, it's, it's ridiculous, even with the 3.6 engine. All right, the uh, suspension on the JL, um, it's just beefier up front as far as the steering goes. They did have a recall to add a, steer, a uh, steering dampener. I didn't really notice any wobble problems like some people supposedly had, but they added it to it uh, at one point. Um, the, uh, the front axle is an M186. A lot of people say it's a Dana 30, but it's technically not. It's the third generation. It's an M186. Um, it's beefier than previous Dana 30 axles and uh, also it comes with an axle disconnect and I'll have a link down at the bottom to for you to click on to to learn a little bit more about that it's it's kind of it's basically they did it for MPG problem with MPG issues which MPGs on this is great I'm getting with a two liter 20 miles per gallon uh, anywhere I go um, so all right the rear axle is different on this particular Jeep. This this ax this rear axle is a Dana 44 kind of, but it's actually the M220. Now, regular sports will come with the M200. This is an M220. It's an anti-spin differential also, and it allows, um, uh, it, it just was a part of the tow package that came with this Jeep. So that's another thing you gotta look at is, is what type of axle is the back. They supposedly they went to the M200 is comparable to a Dana 35. It's like their third generation, but it's M200 for for that one. But this one's going to be M220. All right, let's talk about wheels and tires. Now this came with uh, some Goodyear all season, all terrain. I don't know. They were all nothing. They were terrible tires that came with it. They're about 30 and a half uh, actual height. Um, but I was going all over the road with those things and really just hated them and the moment I put these new tires on it was better I went with a 35 inch tire which has had no problems with the brake system and the axle on there going up to a 37 inch tire probably won't be recommended but it's, it's one of those things with these front axles we just don't know but I went with a Mickey Thompson uh, Deegan 38 and they've been awesome the moment I put these on I felt like I had a connection with the road these are mud terrains I mean yes they're you know at, after I put some miles on it they did get a little bit louder but I'd rather have a mud terrain than an all-terrain when I go hit the trails and you should too um, also, I added some steel wheels. Uh, these are some Pro-Comp uh, steel wheels. Uh, excuse me, it's not steel wheels, aluminum wheels. Um, they, uh, they're supposed to be a, a matte black finish, but they look like a kind of a dark gunmetal, which I really, really like. All right, so you can put 35 inch tires on a uh, Sport. You just don't have very little, you have very little articulation. Uh, your fenders are going to rub if you have, you know, on, on the trails. Uh, but so what I did was I just added a two and a half inch uh, TerraFlex spacer lift, and included these Falcon shocks that I was was fortunate to win. Um, they are wonderful. They're the SP2 shock. Um, they're different than the regular mono Falcon shocks in it that you actually are able to twist the bottom of it to change it between a stiff or soft shock. I've had it on soft this entire time and it's been wonderful. Uh, whether it's on the street or on the trail, man, this has been great. And uh, man, I, I, this was always going to, supposed to be a temporary thing uh, to, to go out on some trips, but I might keep it on for longer than I think. Um, wonderful uh, kit by uh, TerraFlex. All right, as far as the 35 inch tires, uh, you can go to a 37, um, but you're gonna have, you know, even with a two and a half inch lift. The only thing is, I just worry about the strength of the axle, we just don't know too much. But as far as the gearing goes, I just, with these 35s, I have three, four, five gearing in this, and it's working out great, no problems. I didn't lose any power at all. Um, that's the one thing with JKs and JLs, a new world when it comes to gearing because the axles are different. 
the the transmission is different the engine even the 36 engine is going to be different so uh, someone has a JK telling you what gears to put in a JL is probably the wrong advice it's completely different and so with three four fives I'm able to run some 35s I know somebody that's running 37s at that same gearing with no problems I'm probably not going to do that I'm probably going to upgrade that front axle and gears when I go up to 37s later on all right, let's talk about the exterior body. Uh, most of the exterior body is actually made out of aluminum to save some weight. Um, it's all aluminum, the hood and, and this front quarter pound, uh, this front panel. Uh, the doors are also aluminum, which is nice when you lift them off. Like the TJ doors are made of steel and it, man, it's tough to get off. Whereas these lumen doors are light as can be. Um, now the there is steel in the tub here and on the roll cages um, and kind of this section around the doors but everything else is aluminum which is something you need to consider when you think about fenders uh, these are fenders and these fenders are a little bit thicker than your Sahara and Rubicon fenders the Rubicon fenders will actually be a little bit higher um, but these are plastic and a lot of the fender companies uh, right now uh, are kind of not sure about, they're, they're getting all kinds of good and bad reviews because we're attaching, uh, in cases, steel to aluminum, which not, might not be best. That's something you need to consider if you change out these fenders. But I like the fenders so far, I might chop them. Um, it's easier to chop a Sahara and Rubicon one. It, it actually separates, whereas I'll have to actually uh, physically cut this if I want some more room but I'm right now I'm happy with it uh, I might think about doing that I'm not sure all right one of the things I added to the Jeep was this Ruby rail um, when it comes with a sport all you see is this ugly line of bolt holes and I wanted to cover up immediately luckily I knew somebody that uh, had a Ruby rail I was able to get and it has worked out really well I, I was uh, testing it out uh, a couple weekends ago on the trail and it was wonderful uh, it uh, just just worked well slid I don't have any body damage but that's something you can probably find pretty cheap or maybe people giving them away to add steps which I don't understand why you'd add steps it's just something that will hang up on a rock I even saw a guy that had one of those steps that would would drop down and I was just sitting there watching him trying to get the step back up at, after uh, hitting some trails um, also, uh, one thing I have special on this one is the hardtop. Now, this is not the best thing on the trails, but I really like the look of the hardtop. It also comes with the Freedom Panels. Um, they did some changes to the hardtop from the JK to the JL to allow it to have uh, more, um, so, so it wouldn't leak as much. Um, also, the, this rail actually extends all the way back. And actually, one of the things is you definitely don't like hard tops on a trail. On the other side, I hit a tree and it sounded like it just completely broke, but fortunately it just made a small crack on this, uh, this I guess this rail right up here. And so I'm just gonna fill it in with the red paint pen as my uh, first blood on the trail. Um, but the hard top's been working out great for me. All right, what also came with this was the tow package. It just comes with the trailer hitch and uh, trailer connectors. You've seen one of those before. Um, but uh, one thing, as far as the undercarriage goes, I, I do have this lithium battery back here in the back and then the fuel tanks on the opposite side. Uh, one thing I'm running into a problem is trying to find some type of good skid system for it. I just priced out some aluminum skids, and, man, it's going to cost me probably around two grand. But you know, you, you gotta protect it. But uh, right now the transfer case does have a, uh, has, have a skid on it along with um, the battery and the gas tank um, that comes with the Sport. I don't, and uh, it, just nothing on the engine, which, and that's the other thing is you can't just get a three six, six uh, skid engine plate and put it on a two liter. There's just an, enough changes that you can't just swap uh, one for the other so that's something you might run into some frustrations with with the two liter but overall this thing runs so great um, also added a cargo net uh, on the, uh, the actually I made myself with some with some uh, rope the only thing is it 
made my fingers completely raw doing the knots but you should check out my video on camping with the dog it worked out great i can put stuff over to the side between the hard top and the net and uh, also on the tailgate i added uh added a relocation bracket and reinforcement bracket from rough country uh, you need the reinforce the uh, relocation bracket to lift the the um the uh, 35 inch tire higher so it doesn't hit the stock bumper, which that's what I still have on there right now. Uh, there's been some mixed reviews with rear bumpers causing body damage in the back, so watch out for that if you're looking to replace that rear bumper. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't myself. I added the reinforcement um, to, the, uh, to the tailgate. It said you really didn't need it, but it's just insurance. Uh, with the TJ, we've had instances with that um, bending up so and by not reinforcing it so we're just trying to make sure that doesn't happen with the JL. I haven't done too much with the interiors uh, one thing is I don't have uh, power door locks and uh, the power group so it's just manual uh, windows pouring down but I mean hey you're supposed to take the doors off right um, but I, one thing I did add was the floor mats um, the Mopar floor mats is really cool. But it has a little uh, dinosaur on them. I also uh, made my own tailgate table that I'll do a video about how I made that uh, very soon. And um, this thing, it's lovely. I love the interior. It's nice and sleek. Uh, it, it looks like you could just take the doors off and it get rained on and no problem. Plenty of space inside. It supposedly is, the body is a little bit um, bigger than a JK. Um, but it's been working out great. Uh, you also, with the four wheel drive, you have you know four low, uh, four high, you know two high on it. it. Now there's an upgraded transfer case for the Rubicon. There's um, you also can change the auto to manual, which you you should probably do when you got in four low and hitting the trails, switching up between one first and second gear, depending on how fast you're going to go. Um, I just have the basic uh, touchscreen system inside. Um, I, I like to keep things basic. I didn't want anything too complicated. I've heard horror stories of people with complicated systems and just getting frustrated um, with, I, I heard on JK's, you, you could hit some power windows and it would mess up a bunch of other things by just rolling up and down the window. So it, being as basic as, as it can be is wonderful for me and exactly what I'm looking for. So overall, I love the Wabash Cannonball. Uh, the only thing you're going to have to realize is you need to look at that spec sheet very closely. You know, what does it offer? I didn't even look at this closely. I thought I was going to get 15 miles to the gallon when I bought it, and then I was getting 20 miles a gallon. I was like, something's wrong here. Um, but look at your spec sheet. Every the, Some of the stuff that, that was available on the 2018 and 2019 Sport is not available on the 2020 Sport. And I don't know what it's going to be in the future. That's all I know on that. So, you know, look at your spec sheet. You know, make sure you have everything you want. You know, eventually I'm going to probably upgrade the uh, Pro Rock, uh, upgrade to a Pro Rock 44 in the front, get rid of the axle disconnect and everything so I can run 37 inch tires. You know, maybe, you know, lift it up another inch. I don't know yet. It all depends on how much money I make off this YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, I love this thing, and I definitely recommend it. And uh, you know, it, people say go with the three six and not the two liter, and I'm telling you, dude, you'll be happy with the two liter if you end up with that. And um, just make sure you know to check out: is it the e torque? Is it not the e torque? Because that, when it comes to that, I can't give you any type of review on that. All I know is the two liter e torque I love. So. So have fun sh shopping for Jeeps, and once you find that Jeep, hit those trails, and you'll be happy. Get some really good tires, too. Mickey Thompson's, Man USA.